In this video, I'm going to highlight some concepts uh, that you'll find in chapter one in the Robbins book. Um, so the first thing that she talks about really is uh, what does a web designer do? And so I wanted to talk about this in real life by looking at a, a site called dice.com. And when you open this up, if you've got location turned on, you it'll say Gainesville. And although there are some interesting web design jobs in Gainesville, let's look at a bigger city. Let's go to Miami. And I'm just going to type in the word designer because since these are tech jobs, well, I think uh, we'll have some good luck. Uh, let's see. So we've got some different designer jobs that come up all kinds of different things. And you notice I didn't go to a journalism site. I just want you to see in general uh, what are these jobs. So I'm going to open up two just so you can see some job descriptions. And I encourage you to do this kind of thing on your own, right? When you look at job descriptions, even if you're a long way from graduation, you find out, well, what do these people actually do, right? What, what should I be learning if I want to have this kind of job? Uh, so I wanted you to have a look at this and of course you can pause the video and read it. I'm not going to read it to you, but you will find words in here in this job description that are explained in the Robbins book, like user experience, right? Um, let's see, I think there was another one, wireframes, right? Uh, create sketches, prototypes. What are those? What do UI and UX designers actually do? And what is UI and UX? I'll talk about that a little more in the video. Um, and let's look at one other uh, job description, front end web designer, right? Uh, so design, uh, implement, interactive, responsive, right? What kind of experience do they want you to have? And in this case, the experience includes exactly the kind of skills that we're gonna be dealing with in this class, right? HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and jQuery. Notice that if you're gonna be hired as a front-end web designer, you also need to know design, which is not part of this course, right? You need to know about typography, you need to know about layout, you need to know about color theory. So you might want to take a design class if you're really interested in this kind of job. Uh, so again, this is dice.com and I think you should go in here and you don't have to search in Miami. You can search in New York or Chicago. Um, even if you don't intend to move to that city, just look at what kind of jobs there are. Some day you might search and there's not so many jobs in Miami. Um, another day you search and there'll be a lot of jobs there. So um, in Robin, she talks about these different aspects of web design. Uh, and that means I want to show you one other thing related to what Robbins is talking about. And that is the way these things fit together. So Robbins talks about uh, user experience, user interaction, and user interface design, right? So what is interaction design? What is uh, interface design? What is user experience? In this diagram, uh, we also have another abbreviation, IA, that stands for information architecture. So all of these phrases have different meanings and they're really parts of different jobs, but sometimes one job combines two or more of these aspects of web design and or web development. Now, one thing I like about this diagram is that it separates front end and back end. Let me talk just for a moment about back end. So back end, uh, when we talk about web development work, and this is also in Robin's chapter one, she describes this more fully, but the back end is the things that happen on the server which is not the computer sitting in front of the user, it's the computer that controls this website. We are not going to deal with the back end in this class. Uh, we will deal with the back end in the second course that this course is a prerequisite for. Um, but back end technologies have a lot more to do with programming and databases 
and um, not really part of this course. This course is all about the front end. And the front end is what the user sees on his or her device, what they see in the browser. Robbins talks about this explicitly. She talks about structure, presentation, and behavior. And a different technology is associated with each one of these. Now, which one of these is actually a programming language? JavaScript is a programming language, but the other two, HTML and CSS, not programming languages, right? They are for markup, they are for design, but they are not actual programming languages. JavaScript is a full-scale programming language, and we will be learning about that later in this course. You'll notice in this short video I have tried not to repeat a lot of what's in the chapter, but rather to expand on it. So I would caution you that you still really need to read chapter one in Robbins to understand the things I've talked about in this video.